Lake, noun, 19th to 20th century. A weighted line to catch a fish. To lig, verb, colloquial, 19th to 20th century. To get something by wit and ingenuity, to freeload. Ligger, noun. One involved or engaged in the practice of ligging. Lig, noun. An occasion or event at which ligging can be practiced, as in, this is a really good lig. London's a pile of shit. Well, that's what I got to say. A right bloody rip-off. I've been here, well, not long, not a day, but it seems like a bloody year. And I'm... I'm broke, I'm cold, freezing. I've got nowhere to sleep, I'm hungry. Well, this is worse than Gainsborough. It's Gainsborough, Lincolnshire. Well, my name's Gordon Schilling, and I come from Gainsborough, Lincolnshire. The price of things. Oh, nobody talks to you. Well, nobody talks to you in Gainsborough, Lincolnshire, but, but there it's because they, they know who you are. But here in London, uh, they don't know who you are and they don't bloody want to. Well, there's plenty of exotic things to do here, but you can't afford to do them, can you? I mean, I paid £1.20 for a pint of lager. £1.20 and it tasted like piss. Well, now, in Gainsborough, Lincolnshire, a, a pint of lager... Best lager. Sorry, your time is out. Shit. Nice. <laughs> Where'd you come from, Golden? Out of town. Where's that? Gamesborough, Lincolnshire. Lady foreigner. Well, Golden's Jim from Gamesborough, Lincolnshire. This is Trafalgar Square, and you are trespassing on GLC property. GLC? Greater London Casuals. That's us. We're the GLC, and you are trespassing. Oh, I didn't know, did I? Well, you know now, don't you? We don't mind your trespassing. No, we don't mind, do we? No, no of course we don't. Not a bit. As long as you pay your taxes. Taxes? Taxes. I'll pay your taxes, Gordon. He's yeah. got to pay his taxes. Yeah. 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 Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you all right there? Yeah. 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 You paid your taxes? Yeah. Yeah. You all right there? Yeah. Thanks.
I think you benefit from this, sir. Yeah, I think you're right. Follow me, sir. Yeah, right. Good idea. Yeah, right. Good idea. Chemicals. Plastics. Imp, chem, imp, down two. Twenty-nine, down two. M and S, up one. Twenty-nine, twenty-three. Stocks and shares. Stocks and shares. Did you say stocks and shares? Yeah, stocks and... Um, Bingo, um, my boy. Bingo. Twenty-nine. What's the total? We needed thirty-one. Tough luck. Hey, old teen. Thanks. What's your name? A shilling. Correct. My name is Eden. Eden Rothwell Esquire. But please don't let's be too formal. <laughs> Gordon, please feel free to call me Mr. Rothwell. Mr. Rothwell? Mr. Rothwell, yes. And you are Gordon Schilling, yes. Here we are together, at last. Tell me, Gordon, tell me, my boy, does the idea of getting something for nothing appeal to you? Yeah. Of course it does. Do you like takeaways? Pardon? Takeaways. Do you like them? I do. <laughs> oh, takeaways. Chinese chippies. With sweet and sour sauce, chips and peas. Yes. The succulent delights of the mystic Orient. And only two minutes walk away from this cinema. Take away, Mr. Rothwell. Take away, yes. Hold that. Big fish. Big fish. I expect you'd be needing a hand with that. I doubt it. You've been up here before, have you? No. Good. Four ninety six, four ninety seven, four ninety eight, four ninety nine. Ligger's Paradise. Yeah, right. Metropolis at its zenith. Poised for the fall. All this could be yours. Legal and free. From the lowliest ligs in Leicester Square to the lig of ligs at the end of the mall. Tell me, Gordon. Do you have dreams? Do you dream of riches? All the world dreams of riches. Affluence, wealth, money. Do you dream of money, Gordon? Only when I'm skinned. Why punish yourself with thoughts of money? Why waste the pleasures of time? The lust for money is the root of all evil. Cast it to the winds. Oh, no, what do you do that for? Oh, God, no. Gordon, listen. Let me be your guide. Wealth is an obstacle to genius. Cast it aside. Cast what aside? Why slave away your life working for money? 
when you can grow fat on what belongs to other people. What, you mean go out nicking things? No. Why revert to crime? There's another way. In this golden city, there are people who never pay for a drink, a meal, a cup of tea. Liggers all. Do you see yourself, Gordon? Yeah. A treasure chest within your grasp. I thought we were in a recession. Recessions never empty the best restaurants, Gordon. Remember that. Now, come on, my friend. Make your choice. What will it be? Take your position at the trough. Culture, politics, business, high society. Each one a ligger's paradise waiting out there just for you. How? I don't know nothing about business and politics. Well, then learn. My dad drives a van for Tepler's Pies. When did I tell you that? He got me a job there. That's why I come here. I don't want to drive vans loads of meat pies around for the rest of my life, Mr. Rothwell. Fear not. Follow me. I will be your guide if a ligger you will be. Why are you doing this for me? It's a game, Gordon. Besides, I wish to prevail upon you to provide me with the answer to one simple question. Thank you, sir. Take this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, oh Mr. Rothwell! Mr. Rothwell! You said you had a question. Uh, what's the question I have to answer? Yes, now this is very important. Please come a little closer. What did the big fish say to the little fish? Your time starts now. Tick tock, tick tock. Leg of gentlemen. Warehouse E, Wapping East One. Peter York, we've been invited, but um, we need tickets. Yeah. Four. No, four. We need four. Well, if you can do that, yeah, you're brilliant, yeah. Uh, uh huh. Um, Thursday's pretty blank at the moment, but on Friday, it's like a wag party. Um, the Steve Strange thing is on Saturday, actually, it's not Friday. No, you're wrong there. Yeah. Well, we, we'd like to, yeah, brilliant. Um, Thursday. Um, Nicola Jacobs Gallery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> plus, plus three, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get back to you on that. Okay, bye. Hey, you! You want to move in a hippo groove? Get your face in the fashion race? Gain a free pass to the mobile class In the lane with the hottest pace But money gets tight when you're out every night So when you're queuing up at that door You need advice from the guys Sharp, shifty and wise Who've played this game a thousand times before We say we lick it, we live it, we love it, we dig it Now listen while we run down the score we don't flash the cash to get in white trash. We just walk right through that door. Now listen, Sonny, I've seen your type before. And I'm wising up to your little game. You've been hatting our clubs, giving the rub, but you never seem to use your own name. You've been the DJ's assistant, the bouncer's best friend, the bass player's younger brother. You've had every excuse. You've turned on the juice. Watch it, buddy, or I'll phone your mother. But I'm not soft. I've borne the cost of a guest list as long as your face. So you better have a rap that's harder than this crap, or you'll never set foot in this place. <laughs> Shine, invent a name, play the game. 
And don't forget the lies you've already told Rule two, use your brains, I'm as bounce as insane Be confident, be witty, be bold Rule three, maitre d, don't you mess with me I've got a press card in my hand Rule four, what a bore, I've been through this before Do you really not know who I am? Rule five, the illness child is always worth a try It's a sympathy they can't ignore Tell them you're ill and they better pay the bill Or you might just die on their floor Rule six, in a fix, try the animal trick You've got a pet that needs a drink You can really make it big by ligging with a pig An armadillo, cat, dog or a lynx Rule seven, when you're standing at the pearly gates of heaven Don't let Peter determine your fate You've got a message for Big G and he needs it urgently Stand aside, he can't afford to wait We say we lick it, we live it, we love it, we dig it Now listen while we run down the score We don't flash the cash to get in white trash We just walk right through that door We say we lick it, we live it, we love it, we dig it Now listen while we run down the score we don't like the cat to get in white crap. We just walk right through that door. Got it. It's like a system of barter. I mean, you don't get it free. But you're having to sell yourself. Not selling your soul, but kind of selling your personality. All you need is blag. You have to lie your way through everything. There's no point in saying, uh, I'm on the guest list, because they're going to check it. So you go down there with an empty, say, record sleeve, go down there, say, uh, I work for uh, CBS. I've got these records down, some hot 12 inches in this envelope here. I've got to take them down for the DJ. He's expecting me. Done, Gordon, my boy, you're in. Hartley, Gainsborough and District Young Conservatives. The trendiest club in the trendiest part of London. Circulate, my boy, circulate. Mingle, mingle. That's Robert Elms, Esquire, my boy. A face in this parish. My name's Robert. Got his finger on the Trinity Shelly, pulse. I'm intrigued. I haven't seen one of you in years. What do you mean? You look unbelievable. You look like an advert for a bank. Do you know what you're doing? This is the trendiest place in the trendiest city in a very trendy world. We told you. You must learn to dress to kill. You must be out of stun all of these people every time you walk into a nightclub. Well, what should I wear? You should wear subtle things. You should wear. Red table invites with the correct stitching. 501 button fly, American import only, no fakes. You should wear Basswinton loafers, which will get free. Your reputation is everything you have. Never go to something that you will not get into, because it is better to be noticed by your absence than to be seen standing out in the rain. Once standing out in the rain, and you're a sucker for life. Make sure that never happens. Good evening. Um, I'm a uh, personal friend of Peter Stringfellow, and I should be on the guest list somewhere. What's your name? Um, Gordon Schilling. Gordon? Gordon Schilling. Gordon Schilling? Yeah, it should be on the guest Peter list. Peter left on your name? Well, I mean, it should be there. Oh, I'm not even going to leave your name. Yeah, he did, yeah. Well, yeah. he hasn't done. Well, he should have done. Where, where do you know him from? 
Well, um, when he had a club in Gainsborough, Lincolnshire. Where? Gainsborough, Lincolnshire. Gainsborough? Yeah, Club Cabana. He's ever been there in his life. He's ever had a club there. Oh, he did have, yeah. No, you're not on the guest list, so you have to leave the premises. No, I am on the list. No, I am a friend of... One door closes, another opens. You all right, mate? Yeah, the buggers threw me out. Yeah, come on, I saw it. I got quite You all right? Yeah. Good, okay, look. Come on up, get on the bike, here's hell for you. Oh, great. My name is Richard Young, Britain's leading paparazzi photographer. Paparazzi? Yeah, you know. I take photographs of the famous who don't want to be photographed. This is the Hippodrome. It's owned by the same bloke who threw you out of string fellows. Yeah? Have you heard of Brassai? Brassai? Yes, he's a famous photographer. Captured the mysterious ambience of Paris in the 30s. He's my greatest influence. What's this place? La Caprice. It's a good place for advertising people. London's favourite watering hole for the rich and famous. They're a night without a newsworthy still. You're going to have to be seen and photographed here if you want to be part of this world. Abend, meine Damen und meine Herren, wo ist mein Parachute? Where is my parachute? Oh, die Volkswagen Braun. Welcome to the cabaret. Oh, this is a terrible recession we are going through at the moment. You know, in the old days, people used to be named after what they made, like uh, Smith if they were a blacksmith, or Carter if they made carts, or Thatcher if they made people sick. So what are people going to be called these days? Hello, I'm Timothy Piggott Gyro Check, or hello, I'm Jane Third Q from the left of the Fulham Dole office. No! Poor old John Bull. He is going through such difficult times. What does he do? Does he increase industrial production like the Japanese? No! Does he have a workers' revolution? No! Well, let's ask him how he copes. <laughs> when the recession strikes, there's no work to be done. I read the message in the sun. I'm looking after number one. Let us all sing the song of looking after number one. Right now. Aha, there's an enterprising young man. Dreadnoughting, eh? <laughs> now, let's see if this young lad has learned the lessons of play school with Mrs. Thatcher. Oh, no! This strike is costing us bosses a fortune. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a free set of steak knives and I'll double your wages if you cross that picket line. Oh, 
no, I can't do that. For if the workers don't stick together, the bosses will destroy us. Ha! Haven't you heard, son? That old class war stuff's out of date. These days, son, the boss is your mate. If you want to profit in what comes to pass, you better help the bosses fuck the working class. Let's try something else, shall we? Oh, I am an old woman, but I would like to buy this fine motor car. Do you think it's good value? Well, my, my dad always says you should only buy something from a reputable dealer um, and check it first with the AA. You should have sold a metal car, son, and four dodgy remotes and an air conditioner. I mean, what are you, son? Some kind of Harry Krishna? Let's try another business. Maybe you could be one of Pop's rubber ballons. Maybe you could be Trevor Orr or Malcolm McLaren. Come a chameleon to try to go to war. Come a chameleon, young girl. You look like a likely lad. You need a manager. Why? Well, you've got to have someone to take all your money off you. Oh, OK. Here, sign here. Righty-ho. 100% off the top. Mm -hmm. I get to live in your house. You get to cook all me food. I get a new suit out of you, oh, and I've got you for 15 years. By George, I think he's got it. I think he's got it. So, we have learned how to cope. Jolly old Britain in the jolly old 80s. And now, the ideologist of self-help, the Karl Marx of greed. Please pay attention for Mr. Samuel Smiles. My name is Samuel Smiles. In the blustery winter of 1859, I first published my now legendary tome, Self-Help. Between 1859 and the year of our Lord 1907, Self-Help was reprinted 54. Yes, 54 times. Self-Help. The root of all genuine growth and inspirational source of national strength and vigour. In the noble world of politics, a new prophet now walks among you. My greatest acolyte and spiritual daughter. Listen to her words. Living within your income, thrift, self-reliance, personal responsibility, the spirit of voluntary effort... All of those things were very characteristic of Victorian times, and I think we could do with more of those now. It was a time when you had great self-reliance, you lived within your income, great integrity, great duty, uh, a great increase in empire, and a great increase in self-confidence as a nation. Self-help. Follow this woman, and you will discover the true meaning and value of self-denial, poverty, is a virtue. Poverty creates greatness. Indeed, so far from poverty being a misfortune, it may, by vigorous self-help, be converted even into a blessing. A poor man of humble and inferior origins may, through self-help, aspire to raise himself to the highest ranks, to mingle with the gentle and most superior classes who have demonstrated their patriotism and self-denial on the bleak slopes of Sebastopol and the burning soil of India. So, friends, take yourself this day to the local office of the Unionist and Conservative Party and order your copy of my book, Self-Help, and learn to help yourself in Self-Help Britain. South Market Street. You should get to know every shop, every shop assistant, and make sure that they get to know you. Because then they might give you things. What, free? Well, free, cheap, cheap, certainly free if you become very good at your job. I will take you to old JP's. John Paul's himself, probably the best at the moment. Certainly the most expensive. And you, hopefully, will come out with a nice little outfit for nothing whatsoever. You'll go in there, 
So you represent one of those trendy, fashionable magazines. They tell them you want to borrow a few glows for a few days, for a few models, for a nice few pictures. And of course, you can wear them in the interim. your fortune and fame. I don't know, I just... Instant success. Yeah. Why not? It's like instant coffee, you know. <laughs> it's a diarrhea. It's <laughs> all people. It's all people. These personalities. We have points of view. I've recently written a book about um, the English gentleman. Uh, yes, I've written about the English uh, I was just wondering how... how Quite a lot about the English gentleman, uh, because you see the dying species. I was wondering how I could become an English gentleman. I tell you what I think is quite a good thing. I don't, I don't say that I set out to kill something every day, but I usually, you know, try to catch a fish or shoot, oh, yeah. shoot something. Yes. In fact, I don't really eat meat unless it's been killed before. Can I have one of those, please? <laughs> I think mm. I was just watching that Ethiopian thing. This, I think, this is gross after coming out after seeing that. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. A lot of people eating a lot of food. Do you got any champagne? Well, I've limited myself to two sausages as an essential. Actually, no champagne. No, I don't like champagne. It gives me a headache. <laughs> it probably gives me some, but I'm not used to it. I don't have any. Why have you got two glasses? Well, because it's so so far to the bar. Another bottle. Well, let's drink to your good fortune and fame. Cheers. It's great. Let, let's hope it's not as elusive as it is for most of them. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Well, what are you going to write about have here? You met Peter, the author. No, not yet. He's the man you should really talk to if you want tips on uh, how to get through in the image conscious world of today. Yeah. He's the man with his finger on how widely all the power should be this month, you know. Yeah, well, I'll talk to him. Hello. 
Hello. Sorry to keep you. I see you found something to do. And you found something to read, haven't you, eh? You know what you're doing? You're going to restaurants and you're going to freebies and you're going down the clubs, aren't you? Been going down the clubs, eh? Yeah. So, Brasserie, White Club. Where's There's other clubs, you know. There's a different world out there. Come with me. Think of London. All lit up. All full of little dolls' houses. And inside, different people with different ways of dressing and different ways of talking. And what you've got to do is learn what to wear and what to say. Over here, there's Sloanland. All those girls, what really matters about those girls is their dads. If they saw you now, they'd think you were the cabaret in that get-up. You see, their dads are in the city. And the city's where these grey guys who run things are. Because they've got the money that pays for all of this. It pays for her and it pays for him to have a good time. Can you see yourself borrowing money got up like that? No FT, no comment. But how do I start? You've got to get introduced. You've got to get introduced around. You see, there are people to do that. There are people who put the money together with the glamour. So the money can feel a bit glamorous and the glamour can feel a bit rich. You get introduced by somebody like Liz. Do you know Liz? I mean, presumably you've got Do you know what she does for a living? She throws parties. She fixes up parties. She's got a reserve list for a couple of people like you every time. What about Peter O'Toole? Is he going to turn You get one chance. When will you know? Oh, well, I know about Lindsay DePaul, yes, and Donald Sindon. Hi, dear. Come sit down. Can you hold up? I'll be about two minutes. All right. Yes. Right. It doesn't work that no, time. You're on your own. You're out. Yes. All they right. eat okay. people like you up. Then I'll speak to you then. Bye. Right. So you're Gordon Schilling? Yes. Mm. Didn't I see you at Peter York's party? Yes. Yes, yeah. that's right. Well, because he did. He right, now, I, now I know exactly who you are. Right. He's told me all about you. Now, do you know exactly what I do? Well, I, I know a little bit. I mean, yeah. I, know, I know you organise parties. Yes, well, I organise parties and I do a few other things. I sort of collect people. People that are interesting, people who've got something to offer, people who are fascinating and people who obviously have succeeded and achieved something. P Peter York said something about lists of people that you use to organise these sort of events. It was always going on about lists. <laughs> lists, lists. Well, there are, there are lists. Lots of people operate with lists. I, I, there is not... There's not a list. There are groups of people. Now, I have everybody, I mean thousands, some 5,000 index cards in one particular little group. So these so-called lists are really, they're categories, they're people. I mean, somebody can move from what they call an A list to a B list, or vice versa, or even a C list or D list. So you manipulate people? Some people actually want to be manipulated. They want to be moved around. They want me to do the organising, to do the, um, the setting up, the introductions. Um, they, they almost want me to change their lives. I can't change people's lives. I can't perform miracles. I can set up things and I can put the ingredients there and then it's up to them. So now with you, we create you into one of these people who are a contributor, one of these people that help with the atmosphere. And you have to cut a bit of a dash. I mean, your clothes would have to be sorted out for a start. I mean, that suit you wore the other night was, I thought, abominable. Really? I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life, yes. Oh. I obviously cost an enormous amount of money, but... Hmm. One of the one of the guys from Spandau Ballet was wearing the same suit, though. I mean, was he? Was he? Isn't he on an A-list or? Is he? Um, an A-list. He was at Peter York's party. Yes. Well, Peter York's party. I mean, I adore Peter, and I think he's wonderful, and I think his book's superb. But that party, it was a great party. But that I would have considered that was sort of B-list. What we've got to do is make certain that when I'm moving you around that you feel comfortable, you feel at ease, you feel at one with those people. It could be clothes, it's style, it's your manner, 
the way you behave, it's... Uh... Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Gloucester, requests your pleasure at the House of Lords for drinks on August the 1st. However, there are some things... I mean, I don't know, you're from... Um... Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire, right. And you have a very nice voice and a very nice accent, but you might think, you know, perhaps there's something wrong with the way I speak. Um, I mean, there have been very successful EastEnders, but not very many. Objection. Now, this must be a word that must fly to the back of the courtroom, surely. Objection! With the greatest respect, my lord. Beautiful. I rest my case. So. I rest my case. Pretty good, but a little more middle on the case. Case, so that it really swells. One more time, please. I rest my case. Great. Oh, hello, Gordon. Come in. Come in. That's coming along very well. I'll see you again next week. Now, Gordon, we'll work on a tongue twister because that will help to strengthen all the little muscles around the tip of the tongue, the teeth and the lips. So, overdue. Let's just try red leather, yellow leather for a minute. Just say it. Breathe low and then... Red, red leather, leather, yellow, yellow leather. leather. Really blah, 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 make much of your face. OK. Red leather, yellow leather. 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 Good. Red leather, yellow leather. Oh, it's coming. Those vowels are pretty easy for you. So let's turn to, I'm going to a dance at Lady Robotham's. Sing it. Robotham. Robotham. I'm going, going to, to a dance, dance at Lady Robotham's. Robotham. Sounds a little ecclesiastical, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the singing. In Sloane Square. How about that? In, in Sloane Square. Square. Now, Gordon, there are a few other things to sort out, which I'm arranging at the moment. Now, one of them is I think you should really become a member of a club which you could use as your sort of base. One I would recommend for you would be the St James's Club. And I'm arranging for you to meet the owner and organising a membership for you. How are you? Very well. Peter, I want you to meet Gordon Schilling. Hello, Gordon. Gordon. Nice to see you. Nice Coming to see you. Coming out to Antigua. Coming to see the new club in Antigua, oh, I see, are you? Yeah, I've seen the leaflet. And I think I'm going to take you along to the Ritz Hotel and arrange for you to open an account there. It's the right image for you. That's it. Michael, I want to meet Gordon Schilling. How do you do, Mr. Schilling? Hello, Michael very pleased to meet you. Michael is the managing director of the Ritz. Oh, it's a mar marvellous place, the Ritz. You like the Ritz? Oh, I do indeed. Manners maketh man. Admittedly, gluttony is a vice, but on the other hand, it is no compliment to one's host's hospitality or to a restaurant that takes pride in its cuisine to appear completely indifferent to what one eats. Oh, yes, I see. Very well. Well, tell us. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Crackling. You see? Let me show you another piece. Give you absolute confidence. Bingo. And bingo. And there it is. You can have those bits, too. Now go away. Hello. Come and sit down, Gordon. How do you do? I'm pleased to meet you. Yeah, well, we'll put that right later on, dear. You don't say that. Uh, may I introduce you to Johnny? Hello. Hello. And do sit down. And sit really comfortably, because we're going to be here a long time talking. Now, come on, what's on the outside? Is that where I start? What's on the outside? Kni there's a knife and... Pick it up. Knife That's and fork. Knife and fork, good. That's what it's easiest to eat that with, isn't it? Yes. Well, now, eat it and I'll talk at you, or to you, or Johnny will, but you won't talk so that you can enjoy it. That is not correct. 
That is correct. That uh, tells uh, the waiter uh, that you have finished in a restaurant or the butler in a private house. That says you haven't finished yet. So will you put them together? Turn the knife over. That's right. That's perfect. Right. Mm. Ooh, that's really nice. Watch me. Watch me. To the edge and into the soup plate. Why? Because that way you don't make a squelch and you don't spill anything down yourself. Toujours pratique ou non. Nothing if it's not So, it's... Rubber baby buggy bumpers, 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 rubber baby buggy bumpers. Oh, is it all right if I go to the toilet? No. In no circumstances whatever. You don't go to the toilet, you don't go to the wee small house, the Houses of Parliament, you go to the lavatory, the bog or the loo. Off you go. Right. Toilet derives from the French word toilette, which is a dressing table, and I don't want you undoing your flies at a dressing table, do I now? Rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers. <laughs> right? Oh, Et tu brute. When you get a very old brandy like that, you look at it, you swirl it round in your glass like that, you pick it up, and you look for those lakes that I told you about earlier on, and uh, then you take in the aroma, and you can go on doing that forever. Then you put it down, and you talk about it for 20 minutes. <laughs> in the meantime, of course, you are getting the aroma all the time while you're talking. Then you can take it, but take it sip by sip and really appreciate it, because it's something you won't you get a chance that. of again. Oh, yes, you've got yes, another you question to me, haven't you, my name? Yeah, I mean, all that opening doors and um, all of that stuff, all that courtesy thing, isn't that old-fashioned? I mean, because people don't do that these days. They do they in should. the circles in which I move, and what is more, if they don't, I stand and wait until they do. <laughs> I say, would you mind opening the door for me, please? I thought, I thought it was all that women's kind of liberation. Yes, but oh, you see, no. I am passionately anti-women's lib. You cannot equalise a phallus and a fanny. And the day I can get a man pregnant, then I'll give in to women's lib, but not until. I loathe the idea. I don't want to be any man's equal and his boss. The marriage of April Ashley, formerly merchant seaman George Jemison, was declared void in the divorce court today. The judge granted a decree to her husband, Arthur Corbett, who is the heir to Lord Renallon. He ruled that Miss Ashley was biologically male and said this was the first time an English judge had ever been called upon to decide an individual's sex. Miss Ashley called the verdict a load of waffle and said she intends to appeal. Do sit down, young man. My name is the Duchess of Hay and Offers Dyke, but you might call me April, if you so wish. Pleased to meet you, April. And you, young man, I presume you're the Ligger. Do you know the story of my fair lady? Do you know where it comes from? No, I don't. You don't? You don't know your Greek mythology? 
then I shall tell you the story of Pygmalion, who carved the most beautiful statue in the world out of ivory and named it Galatea. And he fell so madly in love with Galatea, he used to take the statue to bed with him because he loved the statue so much. And then he approached the goddess of love, Hermaphrodites, and begged Hermaphrodites to turn Galatea into a real woman, which eventually she did. And they lived happily ever after. You should study that story. That would apply to you because you're being created, if you like. Is Pygmalion a story you identify with? Yes, absolutely. The moment for me, really, was a day in 1960, on the 12th of May. And that's when I became a self-made Galatea. I don't quite understand. Well, that was the day I became a woman. That's the day I was created. And that was, to me, was the most important day of my life. If you're going to impress somebody, impress them with your own self. Be truthful to yourself, young man, and you will be magnificent. If you depend upon labels, you will be trash. in London, for example, where if you're wearing, you can wear jeans, but if you're wearing the wrong kind of jeans, you won't be let in. Ah, that looks like, um, ah, ah, <laughs> I never thought Thank you, Christine this would Delarue, to me. You. Lady Hello. Russell, Lady Delarue. But I've got to eat my big baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's but it looks here, wonderful, it look, it does look and wonderful. we're such different types. We're exact you both have opposite. exquisite taste. <laughs> Of course it does. It's, 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 that's, that's Gordon, don't you think they both look fabulous? <laughs> it's incredible because this, this has happened to me that's once when I turned up to uh, Peter York's book launch and there was um, Gary Kemp from Spandau Valley wearing exactly the same suit and they're so original. I mean, they're incredible blue baggy Wonderful. suits. Yes. You have a museum, don't you, down at yeah. Euling? That's right, National Major Museum. Yes. How many cars have you got? Uh, about 300 exhibits in all. Yes. You've never been? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I, I Open every day. Go. Is it really? So, I mean, you have, a, you have an estate. Yes, it's, it's an 8,000 acre estate. And yes. River, marina, maritime museum, everything. A marina? <laughs> Oh, 
Could I pose a toast? Firstly, thank you for coming. It's nice to see you all. And, and to the young man, I understand, who's been bought by one of my guests at the far end of the table, who's taking a fairly, I hope, stern look at how we London socialites live. <laughs> I hope you'll learn much and enjoy even more. It was, it was so, it was so funny, because I had no idea who he was. You were going to Jamaica for Christmas. I Jamaica for Christmas. That's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> so Christmas dinner on the beach. I'm sick of this weather. Yeah. Can you imagine taking Concord and being below three hours? Can you make a ride for this dinner party? And of course, he's got so many shows on at the moment. Good point. That is exactly the, that is a huge problem because I do think that you are very much a product of how people see you, and that you probably tend, in the long run, to play the role that people expect you to play. A great cost to yourself, and I think it's very inhibiting because you don't probably ever have the opportunity to develop your own real inner personality. Once upon a time, and this is a true fairy story. Once upon a time. There was a beautiful little Scots girl who lived contentedly in the country, entirely surrounded by horses. But there seemed no living to be earned tuning pianos or driving a milk float, so she became a model. She was elected Miss Spirit of Park Lane, 1953. So beautiful was she that one day a rich baron, a very rich baron, came down out of the mountains to claim her as his third bride. And together, off they went to a place at the end of the rainbow where rich people go to be happy. I consider that I'm dressing up as I might go to a fancy dress party. Dressing as I am, it's not at all part of my life. It means, it means that I have a certain amount of respect for the role that I had to play at a certain time, for the, for the responsibilities and for the luxuries it gave me, and I'm prepared to carry on in that way. It, for me, it means nothing. I mean, my friends are artists and painters, creators, and I'd like to have been a creator myself, not just stuck with the label of somebody else's creation. I don't belong to anybody. And that's what tended to happen in, in a, you know, in the sort of marriage I had. You were an object, you were a, a, somebody's object. Is he well? He's doing a film in Russia, and he is desperate in Russia. Well, he, actually, he's in Paris this week. Andrew Devonshire saying it's not you to go to the loo in other people's houses. Well, this is after eight I'm hours sorry, of playing poker. You know, the girl, you're leaving. But I have to go to the loo now, outrageous. despite all of that. I have to go to the loo. outrageous. <laughs> Gordon, Aristotle once said, a man can lie through his smile, but footwear speaks volumes. Good evening, sir. I don't think we've been acquainted. I'm delighted to inform you that you've just stepped out of the world of reality and stepped into the world of shoes. And may I say, sir, what a fine pair of shoes you're wearing. You know, sir, you can always judge a man by his shoes. A shoe has a tongue, but the tongue doesn't wag. The tongue of a shoe doesn't wag. A shoe tongue friend would never give you the blues. Some of my best friends are shoes. A shoe has eyes, but the eyes never cry. The eyes of a shoe never pry. A shoe white friend would never give you the blues. Some of my best, some of my best friends, some of my best friends are shoes. He's been well healed since birth. You'd be surprised at the type. I mean, the type of shoes you have in here, sir. I've seen them all. Runners, loafers, cowboys, boot boys, bee boppers and tree toppers. And then, of course, sir, you have the shadier end of the market. Sneakers, creepers, stilettos and snakeskins. I'd have even seen a few Cuban heels in my time. Now, some shoes are bad, and some shoes are light, and some are quite full of hope. Half a left and half a right, but they all have souls. Shoe has a mate at the end of his days. The mate of a shoe never stray. A shoe man friend will never give. Shit. 
some shoes are light And some are quite full of holes Half a left and half a right But they all have souls It's your hand I made For the end of his days The maid of a shoe never stays It's your man Good morning, sir. From now on, your butler will bring in the favourite drink that you require. He will also draw the curtains and tell you what sort of day it is. For instance, if it's raining, he will tell you that so he can cancel your golf night, sir. He will also bring in the paper that's been ironed. If he sees a lady in the bed that is not your wife, sir, he will ignore her, but go back to the pantry immediately and get an extra cup. After that, he will get your clothes ready, sir, run your bath, and ask you what time you would like breakfast. Thank you, sir. There are certain phrases and sayings that you should use all around the world. It'll help you in your job. Such as, John? Right away, sir. Right away, sir. Henry? No problem, sir. No problem, sir. Ian? Certainly, sir. Certainly, sir. Antonio? No problem, sir. No problem, sir. Sir, yeah. Thank you. John? No problem, sir. No problem, sir. With a smile. I'll do it at once, I'll sir. I'll do it at once, sir. Ian? Change it immediately, I'll sir. I'll change it immediately, sir. Antonio? Certainly, sir. Certainly, sir. Very good. The British butler shows to the outside world that the person that is employing him has great taste, is influential, is successful, has arrived, wants to entertain, wants to please the people that he invites to his house. I really think that the British butler today, working for a person, shows that it's the hallmark of excellence, more important, I would say, than the Rolls Royce. If you have a British butler, then you really have made it. Viewers get their right to reply. That'd be all, sir. London's a pile of shit. Well, that's what I got to say. I've got nowhere to stay. Well, this is. I've got nowhere to sleep. I mean, this, this is this is worse than Gainsborough. That's Gainsborough Lincolnshire. Well, my name's Gordon Schilling, and I come from Gainsborough Lincolnshire. Excuse me, sir. Right. Um, pile of shit. Nobody talks to you. Well, nobody talks to you in Gaines for Lincolnshire, but there it's because they know you. Teplers. Teplers. Extra lean, chunky beef. Succulent kidneys and marrow bone rich brown gravy. Van loads of them. What did the big fish say to the little fish? What? Oh, that, I thought that was a joke. No, Gordon. A game, yes, but definitely not a joke. Where are we going? Beyond the grave. We're going to meet one famous and very dead Italian. 
Mussolini. Mussolini. Never liked the chap. Wore funny hat, shouted a lot. <laughs> you duce, no. Machiavelli. Niccolo Machiavelli. The dark prince of the politics of power. Not just a face, a voice. His words still echo from the grave. Long dead, but nothing has changed at the trough. Yeah. Cancel your subscription to Tatler and read this. Look within and learn well before it's too late. A humble penguin paperback, what? Are you all right, Mr. Rothwell? Time's running out, Mr. Schilling. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I want an answer to my question. A dead man, you say? Hmm. How long has he been dead, this Machiavelli? Ooh, over 400 years. Nice chap. You'll like it when you meet him. What? Time to put this ligging into perspective, Mr. Schilling. Pesce grande mangia pesce piccolo. Pesce grande mangia pesce piccolo. I don't understand a word you're saying. Precisely. My old son, you might need this. You're on your own from here. I've not found among my belongings anything as dear to me, or that I value as much as my understanding of the deeds of great men. I could not give you a more valuable gift than the means of being able in a very short space of time to grasp all that I, over so many years and with so much affliction and peril, have learned and understood of the ways and means of men. Niccolo Machiavelli, the Prince. Death rules time, and time rules the living. Evil is not a consideration. It matters not that an action is deemed to be evil. Achievement is all, and the means employed, they achieve success. What's your name? Gordon. You wish to be a prince. You're a man of the streets, yes? Well, yes. Think of what you most desire. Does it frighten you? Regret is worse. You're ambitious, yes? Yes, quite. Look into my eyes. Now tell me, is there anything you will not do, knowing that death will come and steal your bones? Well, nothing lasts forever, does it? The gulf is wide between how one should live and how one does live. Neglect this and you will quickly learn the way to self-destruction. Do not be rash or excessive, but remember, Men must be pampered or crushed. Men can revenge small injuries, but not fatal ones. Men are ungrateful. They 
liars, treacherous, deceivers. One can make such generalities, don't you agree? Lend a man your horse and he'll steal your wife. Lend a man your horse and he'll steal your wife. Do I speak the truth or not? Well, that's certainly good advice. But is it the advice you seek? Well, well I, I do have a question. Tell me something, Gordon. Who is this Giorgio Armani? And who are the GLCs? The Greater London Casuals. Well, they stole my clothes. Ah. And this Armani is their leader, yes? Their tailor. Taylor? Taylor. Kill them all before this tailor seizes power. Yes. My question, if I could just ask you it. Well, it's more of a conundrum, really. Trust nobody. Not even a tailor. Well, well it's, it's just this. I mean, what, what did the big fish say to the little fish? That's the question. Fish? Fish. Master, I marvel how the fish live in the sea. And as men do a land, the great ones eat up the little ones. Fish. Fish cannot speak. Oh, yes. Right. Tell me something, Gordon. My book. Can it still be found? Oh, the prints. Yeah, here, yeah, I've got a copy. It's selling well, yes? Oh, yes, very well. Penguin. Penguin. Who is this penguin? Do you think you could sign that copy for me? For you, Gordon, I'll do it. Study this. Not many jokes, but a very good read. I've read it. Do not trust this penguin. Fish don't speak. What did the big fish say to the little fish? Fish don't speak. Fish don't speak. My fish do. Do they? Afraid so. This is bloody ridiculous. Time is running out, Mr. Schilling. I thought this was just a game. I want you to win. Aiton Castle, November the 1st. Dear Gordon, it was so nice to meet you in London last week at the Ritz. What a pleasant evening. We are having a shoot at Aiton with some friends of mine on the weekend of the 17th. I wonder if you would like to come. If you are free, the best way to travel is by train from King's Cross to Berwick-on-Tweed. In case we are not in when you arrive, our Mr Wallace will meet you and show you to your room. Yours ever. David. Very ornate, this hall, too. Have your um, family been in the house long? Pardon? Have your family been in the house long? Oh, a long time, yes. Sir. Over 50 years. Yes. Mm. This is Montague Berti, second Earl of Lindsay, great Lord Chamberlain of England. This is your bedroom in the back. It's the door here. And dinner's eight o'clock, sir. So. 
I think you need. Well, thank you very much. A genealogy of the family of Bertie, descended from Leopold de Bertie, who came from Bertie land. these presents, we, the King of these Isles, Book Marshal in Chief, Grand Master of the Order of Jaubulon, High Prince of Access, Protector of the Free, Lord of the Manor, Duke of this Parish, do hereby declare and name our loyal subject, Lord Gordon Schilling, First Earl of the Palatine of Ligmalia, that he and all the heirs issuing from his loins shall enjoy all the rights and prerogatives of that high calling inasmuch as he shall remain a true and loyal subject, acting always in accordance with the oath of loyalty. Second, Second word. word. Shovel Ray. 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 Welcome to Bank's Peerage Computer Services. Looking for the ideal partner? The Blood and Gold list allows you, at a glance, to select from England's finest. Our Top 10 is your most accurate guide to aristocratic connections and millionaire status. Please enter the appropriate code. Edgeball Brian Program. Are you interested? How nice. Yes, please. Annabel Hesseltine. Hmm? Eligible husband program. Are you interested? How nice. Yes, please. 
the top 10 eligible young bachelors. Gordon Schilling. I say, old chap, an imposter. Warning, 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 warning. Gordon Schilling, born Gainsborough, Lincolnshire, 1964, age 20, son of William Schilling, van driver for Templars Pass, two brothers, one sister, education, Gainsborough Comprehensive. No money, no money, no money, no money, no title, no title, no title, no title. No title. In ineligible. Ineligible. Mr. Schilling, shall I cut you open like a fish to find my answer? Thank you, but I'm not in the mood. Yes. One seldom is when the time comes, Mr. Schilling. One seldom is. You're a disappointment to me, Gordon, my boy. Just like all the others. Thank you. Grandibus exigui sum pisces piscibus esca. Big fish eat little fish. Big fish eat little fish. Correct. But who pays the bill, Gordon? Who pays the bill? Not me. Behold, a liquor's paradise. You said it. Never listen to strangers. They'll eat you up, bones and all. Just look into their faces, you'll see. Life is a party, don't you agree? All this can be yours, legal and free. You said it. Yes, I said it. And now, Mr. Schilling, you've travelled the world. You've sat at their tables, looked into their faces. What do you see? How many fish? What was the cost? No cost. It was all free. No star prize for you, Gordon, my boy. Stop your prize. And answer your own bloody stupid riddles. Look within, Mr. Schilling. Here is the key. From a tepler's pie to the biggest fish in the sea, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Right, Gordon, from now on, you're going to have to help yourself. on my knee 
I came down to London from Gainsborough, Lincolnshire. I had no job, no money, no qualifications. I, I was hoping to make it. This is my story. I've got into the best launches, the best parties. I've met the film stars, rock stars, lords, ladies. Do you know Lady LaRue? Shot pheasants on her Scottish estate. I've had dinner at the Ritz, dined off Sir Nigel Broke's solid gold dinner service. I met Lord Montague, Lady Rothermere, uh, Fiona Fullerton, who's in the new Bond movie. Uh, Baroness Tyson, she's the one with the famous art collection. Well, perhaps you've seen it. Well, I've met them all, and it's never cost me a penny. I mean, everyone wants something for nothing. That's why they play bingo. I mean, or who dares win? Or who dares wins? <laughs> everyone wants to win a million. But th there's another way. There's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. But there's, a, there's another way. I, I met this group of people who don't need money. Freeloaders, real professionals. Well, I met them and they taught me their skills. It's a real art. What is this freeloaders group called? Well, they call themselves liggers. Liggers? Yes. <laughs> I've heard that. I've learned that every closed door has a password. And I know the lot. How to help yourself in self-help Britain. Well, I think that's a story that would definitely interest the middle readers, and I should be very glad to buy it. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for bringing it to our notice. Thank you. Thank you. Rule one, have no shame. Invent a name, play the game. And don't forget the lies you've already told. Rule two, use your brain, drive those bouncers insane. Be confident, be witty, be bold. Rule three, maitre d', don't you mess with me, I've got a press card in my hand. Rule four, what a bore, I've been through this before, do you really not know who I am? Rule five, the illness giant is always worth a try, it's a sympathy they can't ignore. Tell them you're ill, and they better pay the bill. Or you might just die on their floor. Rule six, in a fix, try the animal trick. You've got a pet that needs a drink. You can really make it big by ligging with a pig. An armadillo, cat, dog, or a lynx. Rule seven, when you're standing at the pearly gates of heaven, don't let Peter determine your fate. You've got a message for Big G and he needs it urgently. Stand aside, he can't afford to wait. We say we lick it, we live it, we love it, we dig it. Now listen while we run down the score. We don't flash the cash to get in white trash. We just walk right through that door. We say we lick it, we live it, we love it, we dig it. Now listen while we run down the score. We don't flush the cash to get in white trash. We just walk right through that door. <laughs>